being an art educator. How is that viewed? I know that when I was in school back in the day, it was just like, you know, you're an artist, get out, you know, play football. Uh, has that changed at all, do you think? How do people <laughs> view it? Do people say, great, you're an art teacher, here's my kid, teach I have them how to, to say draw? What, one thing for Rhode Island, kudos to on the state level because the Board of Regents passed uh, measures last year where uh, it has been determined that in order to be a high school graduate from Rhode Island, you mm -hmm. have to prove proficiency in the arts. Really? You have to create a portfolio of work if you're a visual artist. You have to, in, in three different categories, perform, create, and respond. So students... You mean I would have actually done well in school? You, students... <laughs> that part. It, well, it depends on the school. We don't have a theater program, right. but you right. could have pursued theater. We, we do allow students to do that independently. Wow. Um, so it's, it's wonderful in that the Board of Regents has put an official stamp, this, this is important to us as a state. Mm -hmm. And we've got, if not among the highest, the highest standards for graduation for the arts in the country. Where, where we struggle is that, uh, because we're having so many difficulties economically, mm -hmm. especially in the, we, I, I work in an urban ring school, uh, my principal's amazingly supportive. I, I, I've gotten a lot, of, a lot of assistance and help this year, and I'm really mm -hmm. grateful for that. But I, I know that that's not always the case. The funding for the arts is often cut, one of the first things that's cut. Um, so I'm grateful to be in the position that I'm mm -hmm. in. We, we struggle, but, uh, but the way we do it. Yeah, I think that I also am, uh, worked in urban in the urban environment. Mm -hmm. And you know, with education, the pendulum's always swinging. Right. You have the open classrooms mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. let children emerge and learn and be creative, and now it's swinging this way where it's assessment based which is good high stakes and high stakes testing and and you know get these kids on level academically mm -hmm. and being on the elementary level prior to I just moved but mostly the elementary level the first thing that's cut is the arts the the arts at the elementary level I, I in my experience have been more of the place where you bring the children so the teachers can meet and talk mm -hmm. about how to make the the academic stronger so right. it, there wasn't as much a focus uh, hopefully the new legislation or the regents what they pass will have change that but I, I was fortunate enough to move into an environment now a charter school that's all about the arts we I, I truly believe that you can have both you can have academic success with the arts and in fact the arts will enhance, enhance. Mm -hmm. that academic success and bring children to a place where they become problem solvers in those higher levels of thinking through the arts rather we than naturally, put it away. We would naturally lead them through a process where they're going through you know, thinking outside of the proverbial box, exactly. where they're creating uh, and, and engaging in critical thinking. Um, and there's a, a whole concept of designing uh, educational planning called uh, understanding by design, where you, you look at the end product first. This is what I want the students to be able to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then you work backwards from there. So in order to get here, I have to do this, this, and this for my students, which is a push what they're trying to get all disciplines to do mm -hmm. in, in my building. Um, and often the gentleman who comes in to give us workshops is like, art, the art department already does this. And we do. Yeah, um, yes. You know, that's how we think, that's right. how we work. It so. seems like the support is coming there for arts in the schools. Is you have to what, be an advocate for it as a teacher. Do. What about the funding? It's <laughs> one thing to say, I want it, I want my kids to have it, yeah. but the funding behind it. I mean, I know, you know, in, yeah. in certain schools where, you know, teachers actually buy pencils and stuff for the kids. Do you guys oh, find right, yourself yeah. doing that just so you can help, have kids can produce the art? Uh, I've had to do it m more in past years than I've had to do it really? recently, which okay. is a testament to, to the direction my school is moving in. So that's, that's great. Um, but yeah, I mean it is. It's, 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 it's always a difficult uh, struggle. There are great organizations out there though, like uh, VSA of Rhode Island, Very yes. Special Arts Rhode Island, yeah. um, RISCA offers grants, mm -hmm. and we just got a grant at my school where they were going to be putting in a, a permanent ceramic mural in our cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great because now students of mine that wouldn't have had access to, uh, to clay or working three-dimensionally right. are going to have that experience, work with a local artist, uh, and it's wonderful. Yeah, there are there are places where you can um, get some funding, but you have to be looking for it, and you have, you have to be, to be interested in it. You have to be very proactive. And, and okay. so, I, I believe that students, even w within one particular district or another, get a varied um, art experience depending on mm -hmm. the interest of the teacher that they have. Right. Okay. Um, 
especially, and again, I, I think more elementary level, especially on that level, if, the, if they have a teacher, the same teacher all year, and that teacher is very into the arts, they'll get a rich right. arts experience. And they may or may not, not have a highly qualified won't. art teacher at that exactly, level. Right. Exactly, exactly. So it's, you know, with the high school, it's, it's more available, mm -hmm. and, and students know more what they're interested in. Okay. But my worry is that if you don't get it at the lower levels, then the, they won't develop that interest. Right. You have to have a K through 12 continuum. You've knowing have that knowing the limitations that are uh, for funding and for the support and so forth, why go into teaching? Why pass it? I personally <laughs> think it's a wonderful thing if, if it wasn't for art teachers and theater teachers and so forth, God knows where my life would be. Right. But why do it? I mean, it's, it doesn't sound like it's incredibly <laughs> appreciated. I, I, tell, I tell people a lot. I love teaching. I've been teaching high school my whole career. And uh, people ask me why I tell them I'm a bit of a masochist. I, I, love, I love working with teenagers. I'm excited. I'm never bored. Uh, sure. I get to talk about one of my favorite things in the world and, and teach kids how to do that. I mean, I, I'm passionate about it. That's what it is. It's, it's, I'm lucky that at 17 years old when I'm in high school and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life that I was sitting in an art classroom with an amazing teacher. And I teach in that room now. It's all kind of come full circle. Um, but it just right place, right time. I just, I, I love it. I just made the right decision for me. Nice. Yeah, I, I it's hard to say why one ends up in a, in a certain position. I always knew I wanted to work with children. Uh, I was a psychology major in college, child psychology. Um, I didn't necessarily know if it was teaching was the thing. Mm -hmm. But then once I started thinking about having a family, that seemed like the right job mm -hmm. for that but I, I don't know it's 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 very it's yeah it's masochistic for sure <laughs> I mean, the middle school kids now which are even oh, more yeah. of a of a interesting <laughs> <laughs> breed of, <laughs> of child I love you I hate you that's, that's right. the, the modus operandi have right. you ever thought about producing your art taking your artwork taking you know your your teaching degrees and going teaching at a larger community somewhere else or, or have it you know like just staying in Rhode Island you never even thought about going no, anywhere else I don't ever want to leave Rhode Island I I've you know I've been lucky enough to to travel and you know in school overseas and uh, this is where my family is I, my, most more importantly more that trumps anything is my family right. my family and um, the the teaching uh, the career in teaching is really conducive to raising a family. And I'm lucky enough that I still have my parents here in the state and mm -hmm. my mother-in-law here in the state. And so we get to keep everybody together. And as a bonus, I'm gainfully employed. <laughs> <laughs> I, my family is not here. They're, they're luckily and an hour smile. away. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is, two would be better, two hours, but you mm -hmm. know. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just love Rhode Island. And I've lived in, in several different places. And I think mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's the right community for me. It's a, it's a right mix of uh, being able to talk with different folks, but that nice New England quality of leave me alone, because <laughs> I like to be left alone at times. You like to know where you stand. <laughs> exactly. That's that's nice you enjoy being New England leaders. quality of leave me alone. <laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I lived in the South, I would go crazy. So, nice. And I have. So it's, um, for me, Rhode Island's a great place to live. And it, you, you have access to Boston, you have access to New York, York City. Right. You, it, it's just, you have True. wonderful universities and, and colleges right. and mm -hmm. right in driving distance, amazing schools. So right. I don't, I, you can't go wrong. Right. Access to the coast and access exactly. to the city and you can't, you drive more than 50 minutes and it's gone. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Is there a particular artist that inspired you that you go to, that I you mean, look at their work, yeah. uh, that w when you see it every time you're like, yeah. For, for me, the whole installation idea came from, um, I was living in Northampton, Mass, mm -hmm. and I went to uh, an exhibit of Sandy Skoglin, who's an installation artist. She's pretty amazing, but it's large scale. And I don't know, I just happened to walk in. I was mm -hmm. walking with my baby in a backpack, and right. the door was open when I walked in, and I was just, it was like that shiny thing moment. I was like, oh. <laughs> I think I forgot the baby was <laughs> in my back. But she had taken like a million eggs, hollowed them out, the whole floor was hollowed out eggs, right. and there was a bathtub with these like 
big rabbit, but scary looking rabbits all around it and snakes. And then a woman disrobed was completely naked and was walking on, on eggshells egg and they were recording <laughs> it. They had the boom and they were recording it. And so she walked and they were taking all these pictures. And then I went back a week later and the pictures were up on the wall mm -hmm. and she had hand painted the wallpaper and everything. The right. pictures were on the wall the and, and they looped the sound of the eggs cracking and you oh, could right see her footprints in the eggs. So it was like okay. an installation that somebody utilized and then stayed there and it was uh, art and I was like, wow, that's amazing. I, I want to do that. I have some links I have to send you. Yeah, <laughs> I, want to, I want to do that. And, but then I thought, well, ha, I don't have access to that much material and I can't hollow out a million eggs and you know, when am I gonna do that? I have this child so, on my back. <laughs> exactly, so I, I basically <laughs> just do, I, I don't want to be like her. I don't want to do that level, but it just, the idea of putting things together mm -hmm. really yes. appealed to me. So then I started putting things together and it evolved. But before that, I would never have thought I would mm -hmm. do that. There was a, an artist I was introduced to in college named Joseph Cornell, who uh, was a traveler and created these little uh, three-dimensional, they look like little shadow boxes. He put objects in from all these places he had been, and he kind of stored them away in his attic. And it was at a certain point in his life, I think it may have even been posthumously, that his work came to public view. And a lot of my little boxes are inspired um, by, by his work, but also by a contemporary artist named Michael Demeng who I came across not too long ago online, who's currently working and travels all through the country uh, and will be on the East Coast again next, uh, next fall, um, hoping to do a workshop. His, his work, uh, container piece, is kind of very dark and, and uh, very, very interesting. So it really just depends on the medium I'm working in. There are different artists for different mediums. Any advice for young artists that are making the work, they don't know what to do with it or how to put it out or where to get access to materials or what they should do. They want to make art, but they don't know how to start any advice. Children, but teenagers. Huh? Children, teenagers. Whatever, like any, any age. Like, what do you have, what advice do you have? Seek out other artists. Okay. Try to find other people who kind of get what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, if you are surrounded by other people who have the drive and the need to create mm -hmm. work like that, you'll feed off of each other mm -hmm. and you'll feel supported. Um, so I think that's important. Yeah, I think what I wish somebody had said to me was you don't have to study art to be an artist. Uh, I think a lot of times my reluctance, there was that emotional piece I talked about, but also, well, I never, I don't, I'm not an artist, I didn't study. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's good or bad. And I guess it, it doesn't really matter. I think I would say to myself, because that's how mm -hmm. the egocentric me would say, <laughs> I'm thinking about what would I say to self. me well, back yeah, then. Say, hey, know. self. Um, I would say <laughs> you don't have to study art to, to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just create whatever makes you happy. And, and then if people, I guess, create the art for yourself. And then yeah. if people enjoy it, wonderful. And if they don't, it doesn't matter because you made it for you. Yeah, go out and look at it. Go to galleries. Go yeah. to museums. Mm -hmm. uh, Make connections yeah. that way. Because yeah. you know, I say to, to youth, you know, what advice do you give to youth? But there's actually a lot of later in life mm -hmm. artists that oh, uh, want yeah. to but haven't because they don't know where that to go as me. well. I didn't really start yeah. until about ten years ago is when I kicked into high gear. I always did art, mm -hmm. but uh, when I really started it's producing, producing, it was about ten years ago. Prior, to, I was a music major in school at okay. first, and I was more uh, into singer-songwriter stuff. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely moved away from that and into visual arts about 10 years ago and haven't left. So. Okay. Where would you like your art to be in about five years? What would you like to be producing in about five years? Is there any goal, producing? anything? Something that's honest to my experience at the time. It, uh -huh. it, you know, something, Excellent answer. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it you know, can't be contrived. You can't, it's that's really, you, good art is going to be based on real experience. You know, mm -hmm. I often hear actors say, you know, if you can draw on a real experience in your life and channel that into your character, you're going to get a much more meaningful and mm -hmm. uh, uh, much more impressive and, and genuine performance. Mm -hmm. I think the same can be said of the visual arts. If you're creating work that's a true reflection of your experiences, um, then it's genuine and honest and will, will be uh, communicating in a way that's much more effective. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think for me, two answers. You said where do you want it to 
be mm -hmm. and where I Not thought you meant basement. physically. <laughs> I, I, I would say that for me, it sounds maybe cheesy, parenty, but uh, the biggest compliment for me is if my artwork was hanging on my my children's own home. I would love to see that. Yeah. If if they chose oh, okay. to put it there, I, I don't wouldn't force them to, but mm -hmm. if they chose to, I would think that was a compliment. But I, I want to go big with my, I, I've definitely, mm -hmm. I just bought a new house and I have a little, uh, it has a shed with electricity, so it's my nice. art studio. Nice. And I want to go big. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, definitely interested, I'm like more of a Home Depot artist. I, I like go there all the time and just buy stuff. And uh, I'm going to take a class at the steel yard in the spring. I bought nice. uh, the, I have it, it's all booked and everything, so I, I'm I'm ready to grab a blowtorch and go for it. I've I, done that, lots of fun. <laughs> I cannot wait. I'm so excited about Something about doing manipulating that. steel. Yes. <laughs> it just would feel really yeah. butch to like, rah, I have my blowtorch. <laughs> I just it really want to do that. I'll, yes, I'll that. I really want to. I, so I think that I hope it'll be genuine to my mood and my feeling, mm. but <laughs> I, want, I want to start working with uh, steel. That's nice. where I want to go. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. Rusty steel. Rusty steel. Yes. Yeah, rust. <laughs> oh, yeah. More links I have to send you. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Taking all these mental Well, we're going to have to wrap this up right now. I want to thank you both so much for coming on and being my second guests on thank the Artist Spotlight. No problem. To it's find fun. out more about either of you, I know you have a like page on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, and it's Jennifer Galuli Cahoon. Yeah, good luck spelling that. <laughs> visual artist. Maybe you visual, can flash it up later. Visual artist. Yeah. That they'll be able to look you up that way and right. see more of your work. Yep. And for you, Stephen? I, um, I'm thinking about starting a web page for right now you could see some of my artwork on Facebook oh, okay. it's O-L-S-E-N well, Stephen Olsen up on Facebook you can find out more about them I want to thank you for very much for tuning in to the artist spotlight today and I want to thank my guests for being here go out this weekend look at some local art go take in a band go take in some theater go go enjoy something because we do it for little to no money we do it because we love it in the hopes that you'll love it too thank you very much thanks guys you're welcome